Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Natal Slobodin from the Ben Gurion University. I work at the Department of Education. And the research project that I will present today is, is called Anytime, Anywhere uh, Flexibility as a Form of Inequity in Distance Learning During the Pandemic. So, this is our interdisciplinary research team, as you can see. And I would like to start with a few words about the idea of flexibility and how it is related to the current pandemic and distance learning. So flexibility is defined as a state of being in which learning is increasingly freed from limitation of the time, place, and pace of study. So the idea of freedom, freedom is strongly related to the neoliberal ideology of control, choice, and autonomy. Historically, as you said before, Angelo, I think you were talking about it, flexible education has been considered as an efficient tool to reduce socio-cultural and gender inequities. However, flexibility and its emphasis on the individualization of student time and space produce various forms of inequity, which I will talk about them today. So the aim of our project was to examine how different forms of flexibility are interpreted and perceived by higher education students from different social categories, such as socioeconomic status, gender, and ethnicity. Thomas, you were uh, talking about that before. Um, in this project, we have interviewed students from a single university, the Ben Gurion University, which is located in Beersheba, in the center of the Israeli desert. Uh, the university includes 18,000 students, 5% of them Arab. And among the minority Arab, there is a special group of Bedouin students. I, mm. I assume you heard about them. Some of them live in unrecognized villages, which are disconnected from water, electricity. And as you can imagine, they were having a many difficulties learning online. Mm -hmm. As you can see, th these are students going to school. So there is not really good transportation. We have interviewed 50 enrolled undergraduate, undergraduate and graduate students, Arab and Jewish, representing diversity in terms of socioeconomic status, gender, and ethnic categories. As you can see here, we try to represent uh, different faculties and a different generation in the academy, first generation in academy and second generation. These are the, the number of students from each category. So we try to represent them as, as much as possible. In our analysis, we've analyzed the data along three axes of flexibility. Temporal flexibility, which is about the when to study or at what pace special flexibility, which is about the where to study, and pedagogical flexibility, which is about the how. <laughs> the first category, temporal flexibility. Here we found gender, socioeconomic, and ethnic differences in temporal ownership. While many students enjoyed their ability to learn anytime at any pace, Many students found it very difficult to find the time to study. Take, for example, the first one. On the one hand, it was extremely convenient that I could view the recordings whenever I wanted. On the other hand, if to be honest, I didn't attend most lectures and I didn't see most of the recordings. So I don't know how efficient that actually was. This is Hannah, a Jewish undergraduate student with special needs. Another example of an Arab student, Amal, I struggled mainly in time management. I unsuccessfully tried to control time. I couldn't manage time because I didn't understand the lectures and I had to watch them repeatedly and lost a lot of time. The problem with many Arab students was, the, was that we didn't entirely understand the context and would postpone. Slowly, the lectures piled up and the misunderstood topic became even greater until I didn't know anything at all. Another effect of social, of social category was that of gender, especially mothers. As Tamara, Jewish undergraduate students and a mother of two, of two said, I felt like I, I had all these 
life circles, university, work, religious ceremony, and caring for my children, I suddenly had to do everything simultaneously, and it was impossible. I just found that about gender differences in working online or learn or study online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. accurate. Huh? The second category was special flexibility, which is about the, the wear. Here too, we found many di many differences, gender differences, ethnic differences in how students felt where to study. While some students enjoyed the freedom to study everywhere, other students, especially th those from Arab uh, big families or mothers, they just couldn't find a quiet place to study. Look at that example for the first example, Sana, a Bedouin undergraduate student. How will I complete my exams? I'm used to study at the university library, but now it is closed. Where will I learn? I have young siblings at home. And another problem, interesting problem, was that we found that distance learning acted as a form of social exclusion. Arab students feel, often feel, excluded from campus, from the Jewish peers and faculty members. When the universities were closed, these students felt even more alienated from campus. They didn't have any connection to their Jewish peers. They didn't find the time or the courage to, uh, to reach their lecturers. Listen to Osama, an Arab undergraduate student. In one course, we had physical tours. This very much helped me to break the Arab Jewish barrier. At first, I experienced the barrier, but through human interaction, I managed to break it. Another example, there was a real sense of distance in terms of interactions, since, since our students' cameras were off, and they, lecturers, don't know who we are. At the on-campus exams, I saw the lecturer. He doesn't know it's me, and it's unpleasant, because you don't want to say hello or consult with him in private. And this was even exaggerated for the Arab students. So speaking about visibility or invisibility and how it interacts with social categories, being, being a transparent student. The last axis was the pedagogical flexibility, which is about the how to study. We know that learning online requires students to cope with self-directed autonomous learning and they have to be tolerate for pedagogical ambiguity. But this study shows us, showed us that for many students, especially those who need more direction and structure and guidance, this requ requirement poses many difficulties. For example, Eyal said, it was de very difficult to grasp, to grasp during the live synchronized lesson on Zoom. And I had to go back to the recording and teach myself everything searching for material, materials on the web, asking the lecturer was not possible through Zoom. So some points for far, further thinking and discussion. Flexibility can either facilitate or impede effective learning, depending on students' capacity to adapt to a distance learning environment. It's not absolute, it depends. The access to time and space is not uniform across different social categories. Jewish single students were able to translate different qualities of flexibility into learning resources. They had more time, more space. However, for students with limited access to temporal and special resources, for example, Arab students residing in small houses, mothers of young children, students with financial concerns, flexibility may produce educational expectations that are incomplete or insufficient to inform learning behavior. Paradoxically, and I think this is something we have to further think about, it is exactly the need to study in a specific time and place that protects students from undeserved backgrounds from competing financial, family, and social obligations. So the promise in flexibility is not absolute, it depends. So thank you very much. Any questions? I just want to say that um, thank you for that. Um, and we, we learned during this project in, in Metal and with our Israeli partners that there is a research and a group of research that are dealing with the same issue that we are dealing with, same ideas and the same thing. And, they, and we try to combine these two 
um, initiative, uh, information and, and knowledge between us and to bring something else to the Israeli, um, Israeli higher education based on this research, based on this activity in the Israeli courses and what we saw in the last few days. And I think maybe with all the others, and to see how to learn from your experience and to see how to collaborate in the future. I think it's a, it's a great. Ama was, we plan to have a, a Ama session as well. She's sorry she cannot do it today. She has a personal issue. Uh, but uh, I think it's a good start for Meital, for Ono mm -hmm. and uh, Levinsky to share this. And we're still collecting data. Now we just broaden our study out to the university, into colleges, and we find more under, under the population there, even more in the university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah, OK. I'd like to comment something, Mr. Todd. Uh, on one of your testimonials, can you go back to the uh, presentation? Mm -hmm. Or is it closed on this? Mm -hmm. Just a second. Yes. Two or mm -hmm. one or two slides back, uh, a guy called Eyal. No. Yeah, okay, Eyal is here. Yes. Yeah. So he says, uh, I had to go back to the recordings to teach myself everything, searching for materials on the web. So I say, uh, this is a very, um, this is a success uh, because he learned something that maybe he wouldn't be learning otherwise to be able to find. The solutions and answers that he's looking for uh, on his own, which is something that we would like to promote, mm -hmm. I think. So perhaps what is missing here um, is, uh, is is enforcing this um, perhaps I don't know how to say it, a <laughs> to make him believe that this is a good thing that happened to him, not a bad thing. I mean, the, the experience that he feels should be changed to the way he perceives it. Right, um, because the result is good. I think he's now more capable of learning, not less capable of learning. Mm -hmm. We just be, we just need to be more. Um, uh, we need to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> advocate. advocate for that because we, we do mm -hmm. a good thing if this is the result, right? I mean, you do a good thing if this is the result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I just think that not everybody is um, equally successful in doing that. Mm -hmm. And for many students, when you ask them, go, go to the, to the, to the internet know. and look, first of all, they don't know how to do it. But second, they're so stressed mm -hmm. that it, it creates more difficulties, more, more avoidance, especially if we don't see them, and especially if they're invisible in our classes. So I think we should be aware. I, I also agree, this is a very good sign. But I think that we have to be aware for whom this requirement um, creates more autonomy and development, and for whom this kind of requirement creates in inequity in, uh, in performance and achievements. It seems like they're, they're only creating anxiety and not uh, Anything else? And, uh, for, some. for some of them, we just have to tell them that this is a good thing. Yeah, and and we also have have to be aware when this this anxiety interacts with certain social categories. I think this is the, the area we are speaking about. It's not only a personal psychological thing, but also sociological. Yeah.